It's a new year. Exciting. How many of the art goals that you set for yourself did you accomplish last year? Did you follow through with all of your resolutions? Probably not right? Oh, but why? Why is committing to a goal so hard? What makes us give up? In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll try to explain why that happens and what to do to stay committed to your goals long term. And you'll see it's nothing big, just a couple of mind tricks that you got to start doing. So let's see what those are. Here's the first change you should make. And by the way, the three things I'll cover are all somewhat connected, so the order matters. So the first change to start accomplishing your goals is to stop simply hoping you'll succeed, as in relying on willpower to achieve your art goals. The reason being that willpower is garbage. This one comes first because almost everybody does it wrong. Even if you were super motivated, how many of the art goals you set for yourself last year did you actually reach? Well, Google says that the research shows only 9% of Americans that make New Year resolutions complete them. That's not a lot. And that 23% of people actually have already quit their resolution by the first week of January. And then almost half will quit by the end of January. Yikes. Most people rely on willpower to achieve their goals and willpower, despite its name, lacks power. It doesn't last very long. It comes and goes it's unreliable, like one ply toilet paper. What? Most goals we set for ourselves are things we want to do, things we want to achieve, right? Hopefully things you know are best for you, and it doesn't have to be just with art. It could be to have a better diet, to exercise more, to be more social, whatever. Most things you want to do though, require you to push yourself. They require you to have the willpower to make time for it in your schedule, or to sit down for it in the case of art and focus for long periods of time, or even like say no to easy entertainment or no to going out with your friends, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All of that takes a lot of willpower. And again, willpower is fleeting. You can't rely on it long-term. So how the heck do you achieve anything? Well, the trick is, and it works extremely well, is to build a vision instead, a vision around your goal. A simple goal is too isolated. It lacks the context. So creating a vision around the goal is going to be a lot more compelling. It's going to give it context. And the effect that this vision will have will be to start pulling you towards your goal instead. It's the difference between having to push yourself through sheer willpower and then just being pulled like a magnet, you know, towards something that is so compelling that it just comes naturally. I guess it's the same kind of feeling you would have if you started to date somebody. You know, like the pull to get you out of your comfort zone and do things with your crush that you might not normally do. Or just the pull to work extra hours at the office to get a big promotion. Or it can also be a pull to practice drawing more if you're trying to get a job at your dream studio. The vision around your goal is what makes all the difference. To use the last example again, having that same goal of, you know, getting better at art, but without the bigger purpose, without the vision of lending a life changing job, it's just not going to be nearly as likely to happen. So for any goal you set for yourself this year, take a lot of time building a strong, compelling vision around it. The goal itself doesn't have to be grand, it just needs a vision to go along with it. If you have goals where you're not able to do that, just get them off your list. Honestly, there's no point in keeping those goals anyways. They're likely not going to happen. And well, not achieving them will just make you feel bad. And before I move on to the second change, I just wanted to thank all of you who joined my art program so far. We just blew past 20,000 registered students around Christmas, which just blows my mind. If you haven't already, you should definitely join us too. It's the perfect time. It's the new year and there's a huge sale going on right now to celebrate. Check it out with the link in the video description. It's a program that allows you to learn at your own pace from the comfort of your home, yet you won't be alone thanks to our big private Discord community. Art is life. Just join us. What are you waiting for? Now, the next change to start achieving your goals is to raise your standards. Well, first to realize what your standards are and then raise them. I'm a big fan of how Tony Robbins talks about this topic, so this is heavily inspired by him, but essentially, your standards are what define you as a person. It defines what you can achieve, but it can also be very limiting. We have standards for basically everything in life. If you define yourself as an artist, you know, there are things that you're likely to do throughout your life that someone else might think is just a lot of work. 
for you, you know, sitting down one, two, three, ten, thirty hours a day to practice might just be normal if you define yourself as a serious artist, you know, like someone who's hungry to get better at art or maybe even to do art for a living. That's just something you'll do. You know, you'll make time for it. It'll be something in your schedule that you must have time for, something that's non-negotiable to the point where if you don't do it, you'll feel bad, like you're not hitting your own standards. Ugh, it's not a good feeling. I get that every time I don't draw for a while. Now, for someone else who's an athlete, maybe, you know, spending hours drawing might seem like a big chore for them, you know, something requiring a lot of willpower, maybe even close to torture. But on the other hand, showing up twice a day for training, maybe, might be normal for them if that's the standard they set for themselves as athletes. Some of you might have low standards as artists, though, and that's something that needs to be worked on. If you're often looking at other more experienced artists and, you know, thinking something along the lines of, mm, must be cool to be this good, but I'll never reach that level. It's too out of reach. Uh-oh. That's nothing except your own standard limiting you. Nothing else. Stop telling yourself that right now. On the flip side, if another artist with high standards is convinced that something is within reach, well, working on it until they reach the standard they set for themselves is going to be a lot more natural almost as if they were being pulled towards their goals. It might be a hard path. It might take long. But if that's how you define yourself, you'll make it happen. You'll always find a way. It's just a very deeply rooted human trait to want to stay true to your core beliefs, your standards, good or bad. If you talk to someone who's lost their job, they'll usually be pretty scared about the future, you know, like scared they can no longer afford their current lifestyle, except what usually happens? Most people will just find another job, equivalent or better even. You'll do almost anything to meet your own standards. It's just too dang uncomfortable to perform below them. What's cool though is that those standards can change and do change over time. That change comes from within though. You're 100% in charge. Your environment might change. Things around you might happen that are out of your control, but you always control your standards. It's a simple change. You just got to shut down that inner voice that tells you that you can do something. If you instead tell yourself you will, you'll find a way to get there. Just a silly little mind game with massive repercussions. Now, the third and final change to start achieving your goals is a continuation of the previous one. It's to change your habits. You meet your standards by performing a series of small habits throughout the day. Any one of these habits might not seem like it does much, but add them all up and as a whole, it's a different story. When people are very successful, it's not because they got lucky. It's usually because everything they do in life, all their little habits contribute to that standard that others might define as successful. For example, the habit of a fit person will be quite different from those of an overweight person of the same age, gender, ethnicity, etc. Like two comparable individuals. If they were both to do the exact same thing to the smallest detail every day, both people would have very similar physical conditions. Not identical, obviously. Genes also play a part, but they'd be very similar. Same for artists. If you were to practice the same thing a skilled artist practiced in a similar order, learning from similar sources, maintaining a similar daily routine of practice and observation, you'd likely do just as well, or maybe better, or slightly worse. But it would be comparable. Like what and how I practice now is completely different than what I used to practice, say like 15 years ago. As my standards increased over time, my habits changed. Nowadays, I hardly practice every day, but I observe all the time. Like I've said many times before, I have a hard time just seeing things and not breaking them down into art fundamentals. It's like I have the art goggles on at all times. Something that I didn't have much years ago. My own art habits are pretty simple. Just some practice of the fundamentals, a few times a week, like gesture drawing, practicing foreshortening, drawing simple things in perspective, studying anatomy from reference to keep it fresh in my memory. In total, maybe like 10 to 15 hours of practice each week, if I count the drawings like the one I'm working on in the background too. And I used to practice way more, like 50 hours when I was working as a concept artist. And then on top of that 10 and 15 hours of practice, you know, I'll just spend a ton of time observing and learning more about the things that I see. My habits won't work for everyone, so ask around. Try to find out the habits of the artists you love most and adopt them little by little over time. Incremental change is the way to go for habits. Not all at once. That's too hard. 
But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this week's class. The new year is a good time to think about this stuff, but it's always a good time to make a positive change. Even if you watch this like six months from now, try to implement those changes if you never have or get back on track if you've been derailed. If you do, my guess is you'll be pleasantly surprised when January 1st, 2024 comes around and you look back at where you were at today. Prove to future you that you can help him or her succeed by having goals with a vision, that you can maintain a super strong drive all year long by raising your standards and just adopting a few new simple habits. And real quick before I go, most of the brushes that I've used in today's painting you can get for absolutely free with the link in the video description. They're brushes that I use all the time. All right, I'll see you next week and you won't want to miss it.